Hidden cause number seven, why you still have low thyroid symptoms, even though you're taking medication, even though your lab tests are normal. Hidden cause number seven is you have Hashimoto's and you're attacking thyroid peroxidase. Now, I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm sort of cheating on this one because really Hashimoto's is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. So maybe it's really not hidden, but it could be hidden to your doctor that you're seeing. What I have found is a lot of the women that I see in my office, they've never been tested for Hashimoto's. They've probably had it for 15, 20 years, and it's been sabotaging their life, ruining their, uh, you know, ruining their life, making them feel crummy, and they've never been tested for it. And that's why I'm calling it hidden. So what is it? Well, TPO stands for thyroid peroxidase. It's an enzyme inside your thyroid gland that you use to make T4 and T3. So let me kind of give you the, the, th the thyroid story, kind of the, the background science. Your pituitary gland sends a signal to your thyroid gland called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and I'm sure you've probably had this tested before. The TSH then tells the thyroid gland to make T4 and T3. Now about 97% of what your thyroid gland makes is T4. It's inactive. It doesn't do anything. It's got to be converted by your body into T3. So thyroid peroxidase is what you have to use to make T4. Okay. So in Hashimoto's, your immune system is mistakenly attacking and killing thyroid peroxidase. So over time, if you kill enough of the thyroid peroxidase, it slows your gland down like a factory uh, with no workers, and you slowly, your levels of T4 drop, 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 and you start to feel bad, but actually you can feel bad any time during that, and then your TSH can move and probably go up. So it's a hidden cause because a lot of doctors don't check for it. They just say, hey, you're hypothyroid, your TSH is high, your T4 is low, we're just going to give you some thin synthroid or uh, levothyroxine and, you know, We'll see you back in six months and hope you do okay. And the problem is, if you have Hashimoto's and they have actually ran the TPO antibody test, if it shows up you've got positive antibodies, you got Hashimoto's. The problem is, in Hashimoto's, taking thyroid hormones doesn't do much for that. There can be what we call a hormone honeymoon, where you feel pretty good for a couple weeks or a month, but I'm telling you, I've seen this a thousand times. What happens is, uh, you have to increase your dosage to feel better, or even at the same dosage, you just don't feel good after a while. You still have those low thyroid symptoms like depression, constipation, dry hair, hair loss, fatigue, brain fog, high cholesterol, can't get enough sleep, you know, infertility. You'll still have those things. So hidden cause number seven is when you're attacking TPO. Now, what can be done about that? Or, well, at first, let's ask this question. Why would that even happen? Well, it can happen for a couple of different reasons. Hashimoto's is a genetic condition that can be turned on in a couple of different times in a woman's life, primarily, uh, perimenopause, pregnancy, and puberty. Now, other things can turn that on. If you have a bad illness, if you have a, a like if you uh, get in a car wreck, uh, it can turn on, like I said, in pregnancy. If you go through a, a stressful divorce or something psychological like that, those are all things that can turn these genes on, and now you've got Hashimoto's. The reason this is hidden, and I'm going to stress this like for the fourth time, is because doctors don't look for it. Because for them, from the medical approach, it doesn't matter if you've got Hashimoto's because all they're going to do is give you the same hormones. They're not going to do anything for that autoimmune problem, you understand. And the fact that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune problem predisposes you to developing another autoimmune condition. This is a very important point. It just predisposes you to developing an attack on, uh, for example, your pancreas or your stomach. And it causes a whole nother wasp's nest of symptoms that really make your life terrible if having you know low thyroid symptoms wasn't bad enough. So what should you do? Well, number one, if you've got any type of low thyroid symptoms or you've you know already been diagnosed hypothyroid and you're still not feeling good, you need to get tested to see if you have Hashimoto's. And then you need to find someone who knows what to do about that. Because there's a lot of things you can do to help you feel better, even with your taking medication, okay? There's a lot of things, but you've got to find someone that understands a functional approach, that understands what does autoimmunity really mean, what are all the factors that go into that, what should you avoid like the plague, what should you take. And I'm going to tell you just right now, because if you go from here and you go to Google something, you're going to see people talking about taking iodine for Hashimoto's. Don't do that, okay? Look up some of my other videos on iodine and save yourself a world of pain, okay? So the takeaway is this. Hidden cause number seven, it's anti-TPO antibodies, meaning you got Hashimoto's. And it's hidden because most doctors don't look for it.